there, Toy here, and I thought I'd offer you some book reviews. So I was way late in doing my March wrap up, you know, because you know what's going on in the world. So anyway, um, I just did that, and I think I also did another video on uh, my other channel. So right now, I am going to um, review the books that I read in uh, March. So let's see here. Let's start with... first one is Black Gun Silver Star. I started this at the beginning of the year. It took me a lot longer to read this book than it should have. And let's just get into the review. So this was a four star overall. This is a good book with lots of historical information, but it's also hard to read. When I say it's hard to read, it's not because the words are too big or flowery, it's because there are lots of parts that dragged and drifted away from the life of fast reads. I think if I were a historian or a true history buff, the drags and drifts would not have bothered me. Um, it would have all just been gravy. <laughs> Everything in the book is very informative, but since I wanted to learn specifically about the life of Bass Reeves and not the ways of the Old West, some of this book lost me. <laughs> so in terms of collected facts about Bass Reeves, I feel confident that this book has you covered. I did learn a lot about him and therefore am overall satisfied with this read. Still, I do wish the book had a better format. It wasn't exactly written chronologically or compartmentalized by major moments in his life, so following along was sometimes confusing. It seemed to um, skip around as though the author was so excited about the material that he wanted to tell everything all at once without finding a better way to present it. But don't get me wrong, this is coming from someone who doesn't read a lot of nonfiction on a regular basis. Um, I don't think the author's presentation was bad, it just didn't do much to keep my interest beyond the fact that I was determined to learn about Reeves. Overall, the work is impressive. It's clear, even with some of the tangents the author takes, how much time and effort went into the research for this book. I am grateful this I am grateful to this author for providing such a great resource to those who want to know more about Reeves and the time in which he lived. Highly recommend it to enthusiasts of American history, frontier history, African American history, and the tales of real life true heroes. So that's I don't think that's a bad review, but it it is honest. I had difficulty reading the book. So the next thing that I read was Chill Factor, and this was my IWSG book club book, <laughs> that's a lot of words, and the focus at, when we read this book was on characterization, and um, I feel terrible that I haven't um, really participated in the discussion for that yet, but I still have time. So anyway, here's my review of Chill Factor, which I gave a five star. This book was way better than I expected, but mainly because I didn't know what to expect and was reading outside of my comfort zone. So I guess this can be considered a romantic suspense thriller, assuming I'm writing that correctly. I've read other romantic suspense, but outside of a specific series from an author I adore, I haven't indulged in the genre much. I guess there's a part of me that has trouble reconciling the romance with the thriller aspect. In any case, I'm glad I read or at least listened to this book. Yes, this was an audio read for me. There were few characters in the story that really pulled me in, but I absolutely adored the heroine. This is one of those stories where I'm always afraid I'll figure out too much I'll figure it out too soon and be disappointed. But that was not the case here. The initial setup of the main lead character was easy to write off, which made trying to piece together the great mystery uh, more intriguing. Sorry if that sounds a bit odd. <laughs> I'm not trying to give away spoilers. Um, anyway, there were a few things I figured out before they were revealed, 
but overall this author really got me there was even one character I expected to be around at the end who was pleasantly not um, it's probably not a good thing to be glad when a character doesn't make it to the end especially when they're technically not a bad guy but also not really a good guy either so back to the heroine for a bit I love the fact that she has asthma and is still depicted as a strong character not just a strong woman she is tough and smart using her mind and her body to fight back at every chance she can but still remains feminine and human sadly many strong female characters have to adopt masculine traits to stand out much as the way of the world but our heroine is a woman literally running out of breath and fighting to the very last second kudos to the author I may try to pick up another book from this author again it's I seem to be rambling so here are my final thoughts the narrator did a did wonderful voice work bringing all the characters to life all the unlikable characters came off perfectly awful and the likable ones were like music to my ears the author's use of language really helped define each of these characters complexities most of them are not what they seem on the surface and the ending was very satisfying highly recommended to fans of this author this genre and a great intense short read so yeah I really like that I'm, I may have to step out of my comfort zone more often Cogs, Crowns, and Carriages, this is a theme punk, a steampunk anthology. A companion series to Gears, Ghouls, and Gages, this was an, an entertaining reading. Oddly, this collection didn't catch my fancy the way the first one did, but I enjoyed every story I read. I do feel that many of the stories in this collection had a sadder tone than the first, but it was a good kind of sadness, if that makes sense. I can totally see myself reading this collection when I need a steampunk fix. Disclaimer, I received a digital arc with no expectation to review. Highly recommend it to fans of steampunk and anthologies. The next thing I read was Wires and Nerves Volume 2 Gone Rogue. And this was a graphic novel which is part of its own little series within an overall Lunar Chronicle series. So here's the review which I gave 5 stars. As with the first of this series, I wish I could give it a 4.5, but since I can't, a 5.0 it is. I smacked myself in the head when I realized the fairy tale connection to Aiko's character after reading the first installment of this series because I should have realized it much sooner. So here I am stating the obvious. This is a great take on the Pinocchio story. Even if Aiko isn't a real girl, She's real to all her friends and strives to be more human every day. She's the data of YA um, for you Trekkies out there. I had an entire essay much like my review of the first book planned for this book but decided to keep this one short and simple. I adore Meyer's take on the Lunar Chronicles um, and I'm so happy to be able to see more of Aiko's adventures. This installment was very satisfying. If it ends here, I'll be happy, but I'll never turn down more if the author wants to dish it out. Highly recommend it whether you're a comic book fan or not. Next one is a very short review of a picture book. I gave it um, 4.5 and it's called Love Is. This is a cute story about love in many forms. It shows a kind of maternal love and friendship. The illustrations are so cute with subdued backgrounds that let the main characters, a girl and her duck, shine. The only reason I didn't give this book a 5 is the confusing depiction of the girl. At some points she appears younger and at other times she's almost like an adult. Plus there are no other characters present to compare her to. It made me drift away from the cuteness of the story a bit to contemplate, is this child all alone? Where are her parents? Is she raising this duck? Or is, she, or is she a youthful adult? Still, I don't expect this to be an issue for younger readers. Recommend it. Last thing that I read in March was Lawyer's Luck. This was a short story prequel to um, a full series, and I ended up giving this book a 4.5. 
I was nervous the moment I read page one of this book. Slavery is a topic I have to be in a certain mindset and mood to read about. I don't shy away from it, but I am cautious about it. I had all sorts of terrifying notions running through my mind when the main character went in search of his horse. Without giving away spoilers, my mind was much darker than the author's intent. Still, the author didn't shy away from the harsh reality of slavery later on in this short story. I did find it refreshing that the overall tone of the story was practical, yet spiritual. A belief in a higher being was there from beginning to end, and even when the slave characters contemplated a god that would allow slavery to exist. But to be clear, this is a short story, and many themes introduced in this book are not fully covered, and I don't think they're meant to be. This is a prequel. It's a great move on the author's part to pull in readers. The story itself could almost be humorous if, if it wasn't for the slavery. The way our two main characters meet is ideal for the love story that follows. I am definitely interested in reading more about these characters. This was an overall light read, even with the tough subject matter. It's a love story and a reflection of American history that needs to be remembered so that it will never be repeated. Plus, it's really uplifting. Highly recommend it. So that's everything that I read in March, um, even, even though I'm a little late getting it out there. I hope you enjoyed my reviews. If you've read any of these and want to share your opinions, bring them on and maybe you can recommend something for me. So that's all I have for now and I hope you guys are staying safe. Bye!